I'm Joshua Green, and here's something you might find a little startling. If you studied the Holocaust back in high school, chances are you read the diary of Anne Frank. I'd wager no one explained for you that Anne Frank's diary is not about the Holocaust. In this short video, I'm going to describe for you why the diary of Anne Frank is insufficient for understanding the Holocaust and why for many people that's okay. Here's a little background. Anne Frank was 13 years old when she and her family went into hiding in an attic in Amsterdam. Two years later, the hiding place was discovered by the Nazis and Anne and her sister were deported to concentration camp Auschwitz and then to Camp Bergen-Belsen where they died of typhus. From the time she went into hiding, Anne kept a diary. After the war, Anne Frank's diary was retrieved from the attic and first published in English in 1952 with the title, The Diary of a Young Girl. Since then, the book has been translated into more than 70 languages and has also been adapted as a stage play and turned into video games and comic books. She is the most famous victim of the Holocaust. And yet, the diary of Anne Frank is not about the Holocaust. Listen to this passage from her diary written on May 3rd, 1944. I've often been down in the dumps, but I never despair. I look upon our life in hiding as an interesting adventure, full of danger and romance. What I'm experiencing here is a good beginning to an interesting life. I'm young and strong and living through a big adventure. With all that, why should I despair? Passages like this one from Anne Frank's diary underscore how oblivious she was to the dangers that she and her family were exposed to and how sheltered she was from the horrors of what today we call the Holocaust. We can't blame her for not knowing more. We can, however, understand the importance of recognizing that Anne Frank's diary tells us nothing about the fate of European Jewry. Here's what Professor Lawrence Langer has to say. I've had a campaign going for 20 years pleading with teachers to stop teaching Anne Frank's diary as a Holocaust text. If you've got a course on adolescent development, it's a wonderful book but she knew nothing about the Holocaust. I um, mean, when this war is over, I'm gonna be a writer, she said. And one of the great unwritten works of the Holocaust is volume two of Anne Frank's diary, which she didn't live to write. That would have been a really important work because having gone through uh, Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen, she now knew what it was all about. And she would have been able to tell us a lot of important things. So again, why did this book become so popular? The answer is that the diary of Anne Frank is easy to digest. It is the world's most popular Holocaust book precisely because it does not expose young readers to the brutality of the Holocaust. In place of that harsh reality, we read the musings of a young girl growing up in hiding. And Hollywood understood how much more attractive that would be to moviegoers. The director, George Stevens, chose to then close the film with the camera soaring up into the clouds as the music swells, literally raising sentimentality to new heights. But the cost of sentimentalizing the Holocaust is steep. Some young people come away thinking the Holocaust had a happy ever after ending and really wasn't so bad after all. I've had students ask me, what did Jews do on weekends? Uh, was there a gym in Auschwitz? Was the food kosher? Were they allowed to go home on holidays? To avoid such naive misimpressions that the Holocaust wasn't so bad after all, many educators require their students to read other more detailed diaries, such as Hannah Levy Haas's Diary of Bergen-Belsen. Here is a quote from her diary. Starvation is everywhere. Each of us is nothing more than a shadow. For three days, we haven't seen a piece of bread. We are submerged in an ocean of germs, of lice, of mold and stench. And the courtyards, the corpses pile up. They rise higher and higher each day. I am terribly ashamed to have lived through this. Anne Frank had no such despairing memories. Her diary is marked by the absence of horror. And that's a big part of its appeal. Teachers and parents assigned the diary of Anne Frank precisely because it shields young people from those harsh realities. 
It also spares them the inconvenience of having to read more difficult works by historians such as Saul Friedlander, Martin Gilbert, Yehuda Bauer, books that are hundreds of pages long, and who has time for that? In her diary, Anne Frank wrote, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. People may be good at heart, but the Holocaust is not the arena for testing that theory. And our attraction to books and films that minimize the horror of what happened tells us more about ourselves and our need for closure and a happy ever after ending than about what actually happened in history.